Hey guys, Todd Anderson back here today with another playtesting video along with Brian Brown doing. Uh, right now we're going to be doing a deck tech on my deck. Uh, I'm playing a white weenie deck that's splashing blue. And let's go ahead and uh, start talking about the deck. So there are a lot of new cards in the deck. As you can see, uh, we have a bunch of proxies, but there's not a lot we can do until the set's released. Uh, let's start off with Dried Militant. Uh, this is a one-drop white creature that's a basically a Savannah Lions uh, that has a pretty sweet ability that... If uh, an instant or sorcery ever goes to your opponent's graveyard from anywhere, it's exiled. So that means that their Snapcaster Mages are going to be worse, their uh, Lingering Souls are going to be worse, and even their Unbarrow Rites or Mulches that hit Unbarrow Rites are going to be much worse. So he's got a lot of uh, hidden utility that a lot of people haven't really focused on yet, but he's also a, uh, a Soldier, which is very good for the other one drop in the deck, which is War Falcon. Now, uh, War Falcon is kind of a, a test, I think, um, but we made sure that almost all the creatures in the deck were either uh, soldiers or knights, just so that War Falcon uh, could all, almost always attack if you had another creature in play. Um, I think Geist of St. Traft, which we'll get to in a second, is the only other creature in the deck that's not a soldier or a knight. But uh, I think flying is going to be very good uh, in the new format, and I don't think uh, people are going to play too many of cards like Tragic Slip, uh, and there's no more gut shot, obviously. So uh, even though he has one toughness, he's still a, a very reasonable creature for one mana. Uh, moving to the two drops, we have uh, four precinct captain. Uh, this is the uh, new creature that has first strike, and whenever it hits the opponent, you get a one-one soldier. Um, I wanted to try him out because he has first strike, but also because he's really awesome in a racing situation. And I think that a lot of the uh, format is going to be revolved around racing. And uh, when you start adding things like Exalted to him with Knight of Glory uh, or boosts from cards like Spectral Flight, which we'll get to in a second as well, uh, it makes Precinct Captain much better. Uh, next up we have Knight of Glory, which has protection from black. Uh, I really wanted to have a lot of creatures that were very good against zombies because I think that black green zombies is going to be a very powerful deck in standard. And you just want to punish them, you know, mercilessly for uh, playing, you know, these big creatures that cost so little mana. And it, it's really hard not to hate on them because um, of how efficient the deck is. But... Hopefully these creatures still stand up to the other decks in the format, and I think this is going to be a good test today because Brian's not playing zombies, uh, so we're going to see just how good or bad our creatures are based on that. Uh, we have three Elite Inquisitors, uh, same reason, they have, it has Vigilance and First Strike and protection from zombies, but it also has protection from vampires and werewolves, which is much less relevant but could still matter. Uh, we have four Geist of Saint Traft, which is kind of like an, a known entity at this point. I mean, it's a very... Uh, powerful creature, uh, although now I think it's even better than it was before because uh, there are no phantasmal images or fraction metamorphs in the format, and really it's going to be whether or not they have a sweeper effect or whether or not they can just block it. And uh, we have the four spectral flights in the deck as well as uh, two faith shield, which make it much harder for your opponent to block the Geist of Saint Traft. Uh, as well as uh, the, the face shield can act as protection from a uh, damage sweeper such as Bonfire of the Damned or something like that. Uh, we have two Aliyev Sky Knights. Uh, I'm not sure if I spelled it correctly, but this is a, a new creature that's a 3-1 flying human knight with detain. Uh, when it comes into play, you can you know detain a creature or whatever, but he's uh, a very tempo-oriented creature, which I like. Uh, the fact that he is a human and a knight means that he works very well with Cavernous Souls and... Uh, the fact that he flies is pretty huge. Uh, I really like uh, his interaction uh, against zombies because you can stall out their uh, drag manglers or lot less trolls for a turn. And really, it just uh, it's it's an awesome creature that I think is a lot better than people are giving it credit for. And I, I kind of want to play more, but I find it hard to play more than like six or seven three drops. Uh, in a uh, an aggressive white based deck right now, so uh, we may end up cutting some of the detention spheres which are in the deck right now, in order to play more uh, Leev Sky Knights. But uh, we'll just have to see how that turns out. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, four Spectral Flight, two Faith Shield, and two Divine Deflection uh, as our tricky spells, which sort of uh, allow us to break through st uh, stalled board states. The Divine Deflection is especially awesome because if you attack with a bunch of different creatures, you can choose how you want to prevent the damage when, they, when your opponent has declared blocks. So you can prevent, like, you know, one damage to your Geist of Saint Traft if they block it with a 2-2. You can prevent, like, two damage to a first-striking creature if uh, they block with, like, two different 2-2s. You can 
first strike one of them, prevent the other two that's being dealt to the Elite Inquisitor or something like that. Uh, but uh, Divine Deflection is going to be really good against Bonfire of the Damned as well. So I think it's it's important to have some card like that to help break through board stalls because we don't have anything like Honor of the Pure anymore. And I don't really think Angel of Jubilation is going to be very good. So uh, The four Spectral Flights are specifically for Geist of Traft, but they're also phenomenal even on a precinct captain. And if your opponent's not playing removal in their deck, they're even fine on just playing on a Dryad Militant. So it gives you a turn two, four, three flyer. Uh, I, it's something that I think I just want to try out because of Guys to St. Traff, and I want to make sure that I'm able to attack with it. But uh, it could end up not being as good as I think it is. Uh, but we'll see today just how good it is against uh, Brian's green-white deck. And then last but not least, we have four Detention Spheres, which are kind of an upgrade to Oblivion Ring, I think. Uh, because they're able to eliminate all of the Lingering Souls tokens from the opposing side of the board. Um, other than that, you know, you can't target an opposing de uh, Detention Sphere, which kind of sucks if they're playing, you know, Detention Spheres of their own. But uh, being able to hit multiples of the same creature is really, really cool. So hopefully we'll see just how good it is today. Uh, we have uh, the land base. We have eight planes. Um, all the dual lands possible, except we only have three Azorius Guildgate and zero Evolving Wilds. Um, again... Uh, for anyone curious as to why we're playing Guildgate instead of Evolving Wilds, this is another deck where I don't think you can really afford to play uh, an island. And even though the Azorius Guildgate comes into play tapped, uh, and you can have like basically two Evolving Wilds and an island, and you can have islands that come to play untapped, uh, being able to tap for white I think is very important, especially when you have so many double white uh, requirements on turn two. Um, but uh, overall, you know, I think that Cavernous Souls, I might want to cut down to just three of those just because, uh, s like, for instance, Dried Milton's a soldier, so is Elite Inquisitor and Precinct Captain. However, Knight of Glory is uh, a knight, so I couldn't uh, play, like, uh, Dried Milton off one cavern and then, like, Knight on turn two off of the same cavern. I would have to have a Plains or uh, something like that. But uh, I... It, it, it can get a little tricky with the cavern, so that's one reason why I don't always like playing four, but I'm going to start with four whenever I build a new deck and then cut them uh, as we go just to see how the mana works. But uh, let's go ahead and cut over to the sideboard in just a second. All right, and if you take a look at the sideboard, it's going to be pretty clear uh, what we're trying to do and what cards we're trying to beat. Um, as far as Rest in Peace is concerned, I think that this is one of the uh, better graveyard hate cards they've ever printed. Uh, it's essentially a Tormod's Crypt plus Leyline of the Void for two mana. And again, something like a, an Umbera Rites deck or a Mulch deck, this is definitely going to be the kind of card that you want because you want to keep them from ever being able to put more cards into the graveyard, but you also want to make sure that you exile the cards that they already have in the graveyard. For instance, if they're on the play, they can cast a Mulch on turn two. And then if you cast Rest in Peace on turn two, it exiles their graveyard and then prevents them from doing anything further after that. Uh, we have four Bonds of Faith, which I'm not sure if they should just be pacifism, but I think being able to pump your guys in some situations is important. Um, but Bonds of Faith is basically just for like zombie-type decks where they have so many creatures that are powerful, but you can't really exile them because we don't have things like Celestial Purge anymore. Uh, but having Bonds of Faith, I think, is a pretty uh, sweet answer to those. And the fact that you can put a Bonds of Faith onto uh, uh, like one of your first striking uh, humans is, is pretty awesome. Uh, we have four War Priests of Thune, which come in against any deck that has a lot of Detention Spheres, Oblivion Rings, or you know things that just give you a lot of targets. Uh, it could be correct to cut down to like three of these, but I definitely want to start with four, and then we can cut them if they're... Uh, not as useful as I think they are. And then, last but not least, we have four negates, which come in against any of the really slow control decks, uh, or even the ramp decks if they're not creature-oriented, uh, you know, like Farseek, uh, stuff like that. So, But the four negates, I think, are important because even though they don't counter the uh, Supreme Verdict, they do counter pretty much everything else that your opponent might be trying to do, such as, like, Sever the Bloodline, Curse of Death's Hold, uh, or anything like that. So uh, I think that negate is going to be pretty important going forward since we don't have access to mana leak anymore. Uh, but it's especially powerful against the uh, s slower decks, obviously. But anyways, guys, that's my deck tech. We're going to wrap it up and shoot it over to BBD with his uh, black, green, white mid-range deck.